We're going to have to talk to the second camera unit. I don't think the angles are coming out right. Yeah. Brad! Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good night. Yeah. Another director. Another director. Um, one of the uh, greatest directors of our generation. I think so. Again, I think this is one that I've seen all of his work, and I love it all. Yeah. There's nothing that I don't like. Yeah. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, man. Of course, didn't really... I don't think people really knew him until Batman, but he had a couple before that that we're going to discuss. But yeah, we're going to go through his catalog. Would you say, would you compare him to uh, almost like a our generations, and I, I know I'm taking liberties here, so don't kill me, our generation Spielberg? Or no? I would say, yeah. Close. Because most of his movies are iconic. And they're, what I like about his movies, too, is their original thoughts. Yes. Besides Batman, and again, he made it his own Batman, so it was original in a sense. But all of his films are original ideas. Yeah. They don't remind you of anything else, yeah. at least in my opinion. Now, I could be wrong on that, but that's just my Well, opinion. in that sense, he, I would say, he surpasses Spielberg. But here we go. We're going to go with, uh, he did a short film. Uh, we call it a short film. It's about an hour and ten minutes back in, uh, it was 1998, called The Following. I've heard a little bit about this. Yeah. I think it was when, because he, he's from Europe, Yeah, that area. And this was, he made this in Europe, I think came out. I know it's available. I'm interested to check it out because it's Nolan. Uh, yeah, I've got a friend of mine, a uh, friend of ours, who said it was a really great film. He's a big Nolan fan. But we're going to go, we're just going to start right in with his first actual feature film, is what I'll call it, with uh, Memento in 2000. And this is good. Um, and again, I didn't know anything about it, never heard about it until you. We became friends. And I was in love with Nolan because of what he did with Batman and the prestige. And I know we're going to get to that. And you were like, have you seen Memento? You need to see Memento. And I finally did. It's it's not the easiest thing to follow, which is kind of a characteristic of Nolan's directing. You're right. You have to pay attention to it. But it's great. Guy Pierce is in it. He's, he sure suffers from short-term memory loss, I think. Yeah. And he's, which sets up the yes. narrative, which is... Uh, you know, it's yeah. unto itself. Yeah, you can't give away a whole lot because no. give away the whole film, and then it's not worth watching. But yeah. no, heck of a film. Yeah, Guy Pearce. You had Carrie Ann Moss from the Matrix films. Yes, coming uh, hot off that. What's his name? He was in Matrix oh. too. Oh yeah, Pantoliano. Joe yes. Pantoliano. Yeah, I love just, Pantoliano. Um, yeah, it's it's got a small cast, but very effective, mm -hmm. and it's a mind bender. Yeah. Um. So that was two thousand. In 2002, he follows it up with Insomnia. Now, see, I saw this, obviously, before Batman. Right. But this is a... I mean, I was 17. I didn't really follow directors, unless your name was Spielberg. Right. I didn't really know who directors were, because I loved this as soon as it came out. I was an Al Pacino fan. I was, certainly was a Robin Williams fan. Right. So I flocked to go see it, and I loved it. It wasn't until later, I was like, wow, he directed that? It, it made me love it that much more. It's another original idea. It's not the best of subjects, because it has involved yeah. with murder and all that, but no, just heck of a film. Now, I, I'd like to do some research on the uh, the backstory of this, because how can Nolan, and I'm glad he did, but how can Nolan coming off just basically, essentially just one film, let's just say, with Memento, and yeah, he's able to secure <laughs> Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino. One of the hardest guys to secure. Yeah, and Robin Williams. Obviously, Robin Williams was just one to do a drama. Right. Yeah. Not, not saying... All due respect, I love Robin Williams. Yeah. I'm just saying it was probably easier to get Robin Williams because he wanted to kind of cross over. But to get Al Pacino, and you only directed really one film, he must have knocked Pacino's socks off in the interview. And, and if, if phenomenally, you know, you look at this and you're like, well, why is it, or at least we do, I know I do, and you probably do, you think to yourself, man, why, is, why was it a more either well-received or more well-known? It's something that seemed like it did fly under the radar a little Didn't bit. Didn't it, though? And I think it still does. I don't think a lot of people know about it. And they don't even, if they do, they don't associate Dolan with it. No. Oddly enough. Well, but, yeah, I uh, can't recommend it enough. Yes. Good psychological thriller. All of these. Yeah. Uh, 2002, so that's, we, 
Okay, 2005, which is where Nolan just cuts his teeth and a lot of people, he shoots the thing. The first Batman movie, Batman Begins. And I love it. And if you haven't watched this channel that much, you don't know, I'm I'm a huge Batman fan. Right. Of the comic book, of the anything Batman I love. And I remember the previews coming out on this, and it really resonated with me because it was going to be the first really live action movie that was going to deal with sort of the origins. Now, again, did he follow everything to a T? No, he did not. Right. Did he take some liberty with Raja Ghul? Yes, he did. But the tone of the film was perfect. Well, it was the first live action since... Uh, since Batman and Robin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this had been, what, seven years or so? 98, yeah. Seven years. Um, so, wow, yeah, I was ready for a Batman film in general at that yeah. point, too, yeah. Um, Especially to wash the taste in the mouth of that last one. And, and you know, the, what comes with that is all the uh, the doubts of Christian Bale. Can he do it? Yeah. And, you know. And, you know, I don't have a big problem with this. I know a lot of Batman purists do, but you always seem to cast the, the, the guys that are not, that are short. Michael right, Keaton yeah, was short. Yeah. Val Kilmer had the height. George Clooney, yeah, a little short. But he was taller than Michael Keaton. And, and then you cast, cast Christian Bale who's about the same height as Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah. But again, to me, that all that doesn't matter. It's a movie. It's not, you're never going to get true to the source. Just enjoy the film. Yeah. Enjoy that they're bringing the comic book to life. That's it. And it's suspension of disbelief at the end of the day. It's, you know, you go in there and like you said, it's entertainment and uh, use your imagination. So yeah, that was the start of that, of Nolan's trilogy. Probably, yeah. So it was 2002. Yeah, uh, he takes a break and does uh, you know one of his own uh, you know desired projects. I guess you call it independent project. In two thousand six, he does the Prestige. I love the Prestige. I remember when it was coming out. Hugh Jackman, I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Obviously, played Wolverine and some other movies that I've seen him in. And then you get Bale. Bale again. Yeah. And then Michael Caine, who is a staple. Yes, of yes. Nolan. Yeah. You know, but just again, you magi mag uh, magicians back in. I think it's like the. What is it like the 1700s, 1800s, something? Yeah, it's obviously cool. very early yeah. American life. It's great, I, and it's original. Again, you don't think of anything else. Right. I loved it. I, I loved it. I've seen it at least a dozen times. And it's a testament to Nolan to see that. Okay, I did Batman's great success, but I'm not looking to do, you know, the next even the next big one necessarily. I want to do a smaller project. Well, I think he handpicks his own projects. Yeah. I'm sure obviously he was younger, so it's like he can do those back to back. But as we see the more we get into this, he stretches them out more. Yeah. I'm like this is what I'm gonna do here, this is what I'm gonna do there, and then yeah. so on yeah. and so on. But yeah, Prestige great. Another great one. So in two thousand six he does that. In two thousand eight he follows up uh Batman begins with uh, the Dark Knight. Arguably the best one out of the series. Yeah. I love all three of them. Um, but yeah, this was the apex of yeah. the three. I mean, you know, to cast Heath Ledger as the Joker. I have personal friends that when we saw the trailer said it's going to suck because yeah. Heath Ledger is not going to be a good Joker. Right. And then they saw the first trailer as him as the Joker and they were eating crow. Yeah. They yeah. were like, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. It was great. And again, it, the tone was the same. The characters are there. It just just great storytelling, great directing, everything. Yeah, you got Bale, who is a top notch Batman, in my opinion. So yeah, with it, you know, uh, what Nolan did here was he set the gold standard of the two thousands. Oh yeah, for Batman. Oh yeah, and Absolutely. Uh, not to say that you can't uh, reinvent it or you can't do a different spin on it, but he set the standard. Uh, so that was, uh, 2008, 2010, he does one of my favorites of his, uh, Inception. This is one of really up there. Yeah. I love Inception. Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he's a modern day Daniel Day-Lewis, De Niro. He can do anything. And you put him in this film that on the surface really doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's great. Yeah. And once it unravels and you kind of know what it's about, it's it's yeah, just just, gold. just like a literal puzzle. Yeah. Um, and you had guys in there like Tom Hardy, uh, Michael Caine, <laughs> Michael Caine again, and you know one of my personal favorites. I like to point these guys out because they don't get enough recognition. 
Tom Berenger. There you go. Resurrected from. Well, and then uh, another staple, it seems like, is not only he uh, plucked Tom Harding out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, but the guy, uh, he's the millionaire's son. He was also Scarecrow in the first Batman. Oh, uh, yeah. No Nolan loves that. putting him in his film. Cillian Murphy or Something Killian like Milford. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Peaky Blinders. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it just, it's. It's a mind bender. It's great. Oh, it's I love great. it. You talk I about inventive it. and original. About dreams. You know, and then you sit yeah. there and think, like, could you do that in real life? Yeah. You know, it makes you think. It makes you think. Oh, uh, Ken Watanabe, too. Uh, he's the one who. Um, the one that wants uh, them to break up the empire. Yeah, he's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's great in that. Yeah. Even actors you don't know. Yeah. They do great. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So, so it's, uh, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah, we res resurrected him. That's where yeah. He was yeah. in Third Rock. Uh, he was in a movie I love called The Lookout that went way under the radar, and yeah. then he did this, and yeah. next thing you know, he's back on it. Yeah, and and it actually it'll show because a lot of these guys uh, show up in the next one, The Dark Knight Rises. And we actually had a personal bet back in the day because obviously we tragically lost Heath Ledger right right after The Dark Knight came out, and. We were wondering, and he even said it. He didn't know if he was going to do a third one because yeah. Heath Ledger's death. And I was like, he's going to finish it off because he doesn't want to hand it off to somebody and screw it up. So we ended oh. up doing it. It was just a small bet, like a dollar or something. But, um, yeah, but this was great because you got Bane and you've got a very realistic Bane. Yeah, is Bane 12 feet tall? No, but he definitely was better than the Bane that we got in 1998. <laughs> Night and day. Uh, yeah, yeah, you had Anne Hathaway, you had uh, Tom Hardy, you had... Uh, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. <laughs> uh, shows back... Kill, uh, Cillian Murphy shows back up as a scarecrow. Yeah, scarecrow as in, like in the very, judge. Yeah. yeah exile goes, or death. Yeah. And then he's like, we're, we're not going out on that. So death by exile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Yeah, it's great. It shows the vicious side of Bane, the smarts of Bane. Yeah. Again, is it to the T? No, it's not. But again, just a great film. How it's wrapped up. It's wrapped up with a nice little bow. Yeah, I, I had... And somebody we haven't mentioned who's been in all three of them, Gary Oldman, Commissioner Gordon. And uh, Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman, yeah. Lucius Fox, who is uh, a real character. Some people didn't think he was. Yeah, right. Um, I, I had one reservation that said the way they... Uh, I'm sure most of our viewers, hopefully, have seen the films, uh, all of them, or at least maybe this one, they really punk Bane out at the end and just shoot him with a... Yeah, I mean, but it's, you know, you've got to kind of keep going with the story. And it's not, that was a big freaking gun that they, they took him down, yeah, you know? know? Um, is it perfect? No. But I, I, I it's a, to me, it's a great ending to the series, in my opinion. Yeah. They had the whole classic moment where Bane breaks Batman's back. Yes. All that stuff was great. Now, again, there, there are holes in it. There's holes in everything. Right. No, I, I got you. On the service, I loved it. So that was uh, 2012. Um, then in uh, 2014, Interstellar. Interstellar, man. Yeah. That is amazing. A space movie. I'm all, I love space movies. They, uh, they draw me in. And you got Matthew McConaughey, like I said, and we can do another video on McConaughey, but when yeah. he changed for me and and knew that he was going to do this with Nolan and it was going to be a space movie, you didn't need to say anymore. I was there opening day. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not going to compare it to 2001. No, space out there, so that, you but, can't compare anything to that. No, uh, but I will say that it's one of the greatest when... In the last 30 years, so much uh, sci-fi is repetitive, is redundant. Oh, man. This is one of the greatest written, directed, acted... An uh, original story. So, yeah. The Earth is dying. You don't... I mean, they go into it a little bit. Like, basically, the Earth is changing. Uh, the Earth is not becoming breathable, and things aren't being able to be grown. Right. Basically, we're going to... If you don't suffocate, you're going to starve to death, because right. all they can grow at one point is corn. Yeah. That's it. What do they say? Uh, we just uh, grew the la or grew the, the okra forever. <laughs> yeah, you got what John uh, John oh, Lane. John Lithgow. You had uh, Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. Yeah, Michael Caine again. <laughs> and, and Hathaway. And Hathaway and a surprise. Oh, Matt Damon. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, dude, that was it was almost like a prelude to yeah. set up his Martian <laughs> movie. <laughs> it's like oh. they open that thing up and it's and you're like, what the hell is Matt Damon doing here? And the score, man, the musical oh, score gosh. takes you to places. I mean, just uh, I still remember that where Damon's talking, you know, giving the narrative about why he did what he yeah, did, yeah. trying to explain it. Oh man, and that was intense. You know, where where McConaughey's not trying to hurt him; he's just trying to stop him. Yeah. From, and he starts hitting him with his helmet. And he said, you know, what are you doing? There's a 50-50 chance that you could, you know. Yeah. These, those are the best eyes I've had in years. And, you know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, just great. The only thing is the ending is a little weird. Uh, it, it, but, again, that's Nolan. Um, no complaints. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. So that was in uh, 2014. Uh, so we go ahead. Uh, Quay? No. Okay. We go ahead to 2017, and he does Dunkirk. We're going to Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should be at home. Uh, what, it's a, it's a war movie. Yeah, uh, told the, but told from the British perspective. British, yeah. The British Army, they were waiting for a rescue because the German Army was closing in on yeah. them. This yeah. is, it's all based on true, true events. Yeah. They were at this, basically this beach, and the British Army's closing in on them. And local townspeople have been called to, with any boat, and they to need get to get the there. Out, yeah, you know, and I, I don't know the actor's name, but he keeps saying we're going to Dunkirk. Yeah, that guy. Uh, uh, and what's his name's back? You should be at home. Uh, yeah, Kelly Murphy. Yeah. yeah, he's there. You had um, Kenneth Branagh, who played a large part as, yes. I think as the captain or the Tom general. Hardy. Tom Hardy again, Was the pilot. Yeah, yeah, and his face is obscured yet again. Yeah, you just see the eyes. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, I I've only seen it once, and I really want to revisit it again. Right. But I, it I I loved it, and again it, it how he does it. We've gotten a million war movies yeah, since, yes. since since the dawn of film, but it's an original story. Yeah, you don't it, get reminded of anything. It's it's not ABC narrative. It's not follow through. No. You know, beginning and and uh, er, you know, as we all know, like you said. Every every great director has to have a war movie. This oh, was yes. no one's. And there you this go. Was no one's. And he knocked it out of the park. So he goes from, and that's in 2017. Uh, in 2020, he does uh, Tenet. Tenet. And I just recently saw this. I know you haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen it, it yet. I will say this. It is very hard to follow. I still don't think I quite understand it. But I loved it. Because, yeah. again, it's an original story. And you just got great acting. Um Denzel Washington's son, I think it's James. I don't know. See, I'm not. See, I, uh, but yeah, he's in it. Uh, Robert Patterson, Patterson is yeah. he in it? Yeah, you and know, he does great. And I'm not really a huge fan of him. Sorry, but he does great. Well, and and the thing is, it uh, it came out, if I'm not mistaken, right before or the, right during the, when the pandemic. Yeah, and it was one of the first major casual cinematic casualties. Of the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I just, it was on streaming. I watched it. I loved it. I need to watch it again because there are things that I still didn't understand. But again, it was Nolan, and and I loved it. I, I really did. Even though I didn't quite understand it, I thought it was good. Again, an original story and just great acting and great directing, too. I, I am going to check it out. Uh, I mean, that was 2020. If you look at his... Uh, you know, track record at Nolan's track record. It's going to be another, possibly three years before you see another film. Like oh this. yeah, easy. And, Especially with everything going on right now. Yeah, and it could be two years before you hear an announcement because oh, yeah. he's very. He does. He picks and chooses stuff. I know at one point he was attached to direct the Superman. Yeah. But then he just produced it and helped co-write it. Right. And then there were rumors he was going to direct this last James Bond movie. But, yes, you know, I heard that. That, that yeah. fell out too. So, I mean, there's always rumors, but you don't know nothing until he comes out and says, this is what I'm doing next. Yeah, that's and, true. And I am I ready. Respect I that. anticipate everything he comes out with. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's your uh, Christopher Nolan director's catalog. Anything? What's your, your favorite? favorite? Yeah, it was, uh, go ahead. <sighs> that is tough. Isn't man. it, though? Oh. It's between Inception and The Dark Knight. And okay. Interstellar, man. I, I, for me, it would have to be Interstellar and The Dark Knight. Yeah, between those two. I can't pick between those three, honestly. Yeah. It just depends what time we're in. I really love Interstellar. 
I really love the Dark Knight. I love the whole Dark Knight series. That's my favorite out of all three of them. And I really love Interstellar. I really, I mean. You know, there's been talk, uh, and I don't know where DC's going. By the way, think... Michael Caine was in uh, Tenet too. Was he? Yeah. Small part? Yeah, very small. Was it? Very small. Well, he's approaching 90. I can tell this scene because it doesn't give anything away, but uh, Denzel Washington's son comes to meet Michael Caine for this high fancy lunch or something, and he orders something, and then he's they get done talking, and he goes to leave, and Michael Caine's like, listen, if you're going to hang around with high society, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble's not going to do it, or whatever the suit shop is. Oh. And he's like, okay, well, they bring the plate out. And he's uh, and uh, Denzel Washington is like, can I get that to go? And the guy's like, absolutely not. And he said, all right, thanks. And he walks out. <laughs> it's a fancy restaurant. I don't think they let you take leftovers. Get your doggy bag? Yeah, can I get that to go? No, you can't. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, DC, I, I don't think they know where they're going anymore. Oh, my gosh. But I, I could have sworn I heard that uh, Nolan was attached, possibly, maybe in the future doing something with... Uh, Christian Bale again. Hey, man. You never, you never know. know. I know Bale said he wouldn't do another Batman unless... Yeah, know, unless like, he was... Nolan was involved. And I, I, can, I can respect that. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. See you in another one.